third year two. It's Mrs. McNulty here for maths today. So we are on Tuesday, the 19th of January, and we are year two workout book. Okay, so we're following on from what Mrs. Wood did with you yesterday. So today I need you to be on page seven in your workbook, and we're still thinking today about adding. Okay. And what we're going to do to help you to tackle these math questions today is we're going to go over them and show you some different ways, some different strategies that you might need to use. And then you can solve the addition questions in the way that you think is the best way for you. OK, so sometimes in these books it asks you to do it a certain way. But it might be that in school, we might have shown you another way of doing it. So if we model a couple of different ways today, hopefully that will give you all the tools you need to be able to work them out. OK, so first number, question one, says break the first number into tens and ones to find each answer. And we talked last week as well about tens and ones when we've got our two digit numbers. And we know in school, that instead of saying break the first number into tens and ones, we might say that we partition or we split the number into tens and ones. And that can sometimes be a really useful way of adding numbers together. OK, so I'm going to show you some similar questions on my board and then hopefully that will help you out today. So my first one is 19 at 50. So hopefully you will notice I've got two two-digit numbers, but that the second number is 50, which has no ones, so it's a tens number. I haven't got to add any ones this time. Okay. So there isn't much space next to your questions in your book, but for some of them, you might find it easier to draw and to show it pictorially with pictures. So if you find that easier and the best way to do it, or even if you just want to check how you've done your working out mentally, it might be a good idea today to have your whiteboard and pen next to you so that you can do some bits of working out. Okay, so for 19, add 50. One way that I'm going to think about doing it is I'm going to draw my tens and ones. So I've got one ten, 19's got one ten, and then I need nine ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then to make 50, I just need five tens, which doesn't have any ones. So it's one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Now we always encourage you when we're doing our adding, when we come on to much trickier calculations, it's really important that we always add the ones first. Now we know from looking at the number straight away that we don't have any ones in the second number so I know I've only got nine ones so I could write that in the ones place and the ones are always going to come at the end aren't they so I've got nine ones and now I've got one two three four five six tens so my answer to 19 at 50 would be 69 okay so we can do it by drawing it out, drawing the tens, drawing the ones, and then counting how many of those we've got at the end. Okay. Some of you might be able to look at that question, though, and just be able to see how they could work it out mentally without drawing them. So what you might be able to see is that nine ones add zero ones is going to be nine ones. So you could loop your ones together and then one add five in my tens place or swap it round to make it easier. Five add one. Remember, it's better to put the bigger number in your head. Five tens add one ten is six tens. Okay, Because we know that when we're adding multiples of ten, the ones number is going to stay the same. So it might be that you find it easy to do it that way by keeping the ones the same and adding how many tens you've got all together. Five tens. Add one ten would be six tens. A couple of strategies there for that one. My next one then, you can see is 31 add seven. So this time I'm doing a two digit number add a one digit number. So I, will might, I might tackle this question in a different kind of way. Okay. So what we've practiced doing in school is putting the biggest number in our heads 
and almost drawing out our own number line. So 31 is going to go in my head and I'm going to count on. Because remember, when we're adding, we want the answer to get bigger. So that's what we do when we add. We get more. We have bigger numbers, so we count on. So I need to count on seven times. And what we could do is put 30, 31 in our head and count on seven times mentally or using our fingers. But to make sure we get the right numbers, sometimes we would ask you to draw it out so that it's easy for you to see. So I'm going to draw seven circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've sort of made our own mini number line there now. And I know Mrs. Wood said you've often done that with your bingo dabbers, haven't you? So 31, you count with me. Let's count on seven more. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. That's my answer. So one way of tackling a question like that is to draw a number line. Okay. Or like we said before with the previous question, you might be able to see that I'm adding the ones together. The ones are not going to add to be more than 10, so my 10s are going to stay the same. So you might add your ones first. It's going to be easier to do seven, add one more, isn't it? Because seven's the biggest number. So seven, add one more is eight. And again, I need to write that in the ones place at the end. And then I've only got three tens with no more tens to add. So my three tens are going to stay the same. Okay, that's another way of tackling that problem. Question number well, question one, but part C, you should be able to work out in the same way that we've talked about. That one's quite similar to question one. And then you've got D to do. Now D says 43 add 30. Okay, so again, you could draw that out on your whiteboard, your sticks of 10 and your ones, count how many ones and count how many tens. Or you might be able to say that because we're adding a tens number and we haven't got to add any ones, that we could add the tens and keep the ones the same. I'm sure you will find a good way of working that one out. Question two then asks you to use partitioning. So there's that word again we talked about in question one. Use partitioning to work out the answers below. They've done the first one for you and I'm going to go over with another question how they've worked that one out. But again, you might decide that that's not the, the best or the easiest or the, the most simple way of you working it out. And you might want to draw it out like we might do in school. So I'm going to show you that way as well. OK, so if we look at how they've done it, they were finding out 54 add 14. And what they did in the first row there is they partitioned 54 into 50 add 4. So they split it into 10s and 1s. And they did the same with 14 into 10 add 4. And then what they've done is they've added the 10s together. They've added the 1s together. And then they've added both of those answers together at the end. So I'll show you on my board a way of doing that over here. I'm going to move that across. We've got the whole board. So I'm trying to work out now 45 add 13. Okay. So first job, if I'm doing it the same as the example in the book, is to break my numbers or partition them into tens and ones. So 45 equals 40 add 5, 45. And then 13 equals 10 add 3. Let's just check you can see all of my numbers. There we go. So I've partitioned 45 into 40 and 5 and I've partitioned 13 into 10 add 3. Okay so now they started by adding the tens together but we know it's good practice to always add the ones together first. So my ones then I've got five ones and I've got three ones. So my first job is to add my ones together. So five add three equals five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to add my tens together. So I've got 40 and I've got 10. So that's my second calculation. 40 add 10 equals I've added my ones, 
I did my tangents, I partitioned it. So now what I've got to add together is the answer to my ones and the answer to my tens. So I've got eight and 50. So I can write that 50 add eight. And we know when we're adding a one digit number to a ten number, the eight is going to hide the zero. So I know. Tell your grown up or shout out what, what's my answer going to be? 50 add 8. I don't need to count. It's going to be 58, isn't it? Remember, if I've got no ones, my eight ones there is going to jump in front of my zero and cover it up to make 58. Okay, so that's how the example's being done in the book. You might think that makes lots of sense and that you could have a go at working it out, the other ones, in the same way. If it is that you feel like you need to see it, then we're going to ask that you draw it out in the box. OK, so as long as you get the same answer, if you've drawn it out, that is a great way of doing it. So I'm going to draw 45. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40. One, two, three. Four, five, and then I'm going to be underneath, so it sort of looks like I'm doing it in a column. Okay, then I'm going to draw out 13. There's my 10, one, two, three, to make 13. And then what I've got to do is count up my ones and count up my tens separately. So it's exactly the same way as doing it written out in the numbers, except we've drawn it. Okay. So all together I'm counting my ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I write my ones down in the ones column. And then I add my tens together. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay. So if that works for you, that is a good way of doing it. And I could also have a go at putting those numbers in a column. And when we do it in a column, we line them up. Lines. Remember, we always start by adding the ones together. So I'm going to add the ones, tens and ones. Five add three is eight. Four add one more is five. So you can always have a little go at doing it in column method if that makes sense to you. But do try to have a go at either splitting it and partitioning it that way or showing us that you've drawn it just so that we know you understand the splitting up of your tens and ones to help you well then that's the way hopefully we're going to move on to doing it okay so you've got two other ones of those to do 35 add 42 and then 40 74 sorry add 23 so copy how the example's been done and do it that way if you want to do it that way and draw it out on your whiteboard, that's fine. If you want to draw the tens and ones pictures in that box to get the answer, that is fine. As long as we can see that you've got a good understanding of the tens and ones, a good understanding of how to add, and you've got the answer, that is fine. The last question then, question three, is just asking you to use what you know from adding, and it's Put it in a word problem for you so you're applying it to a problem. It says Jack has a beanstalk that is 45 centimetres tall. If it grows another 17 centimetres, how tall will it be? So your answer is going to get bigger because the beanstalk is getting taller. So we need to do adding, don't we? We need to add those numbers together. Again, it doesn't give you much space, so if you need to do your working out on your whiteboard, that's what it is for, okay? So have a super go. Get your grown-ups to send a photo so that we can see how well you've done with your adding today, and we can help you out if we need to, and we'll see you later in the week for some more maths. Well done, you two. Keep working hard, and we'll see you really soon. Bye!